Hey mushroom, I guess, and microgreen lovers. Um, I just wanted to do an update on some of the microgreens that I started the other day, as well as an update on some that were uh, growing already, and uh, kind of show you um, one of my new light setups. So stay tuned. All right, so I think I showed you uh, some of these last week. These were already growing. Uh, that's the fennel there, so that they're nice and full. I really need to uh, to harvest those. This is the uh, red chard, ruby red chard. This here, I think, is red Russian kale. Um, of course, there's uh, these are these. Okay, um, one way. Oh, of course, here we go. Uh, yeah, red Russian kale. So I can't remember if I uh, told you to do this or not. When you are sowing a tray, I always put the date obviously what kind it is and I also put uh, how many ounces of seed that I put in there as well as you know I was putting it on my notebook too um, but I do that with just a little piece of painters tape and then when I'm done with it um, I just uh, you know throw the painters tape away and put something new on there but it lets me know you know I already know the approximate harvest time dates and all of that you know for each variety um, and if I'm experimenting with the amount of ounces for um, you know, a particular type, um, I can easily go back and be like, yep, this is what I used. Uh, so this one here is a mild mix. Um, so you can tell it looks a lot like the, uh, the, God, what the hell did I say this was? The kale. So, you know, if you had these next to each other, it would be kind of hard at this stage to tell which one is which. So that's why you really want to, to label them. Okay, uh, this is a purple sango here. Again, I'm not gonna pull it up, but it's one of those. It's either kale or a mild mix. Um, now, here's the fun stuff. So again, this was purple sango in soil here. And this was started on, shoot, of course the thing's on the other side. Um, I think I started it though with these other ones. So I think that was the fourth I said. So today is the 13th. So it's been about nine days. So in like, two more days that will like get ready to be cut and it should be tall enough and then two more days after that around day 14 or 15 it'll be like really tall so i can get the most weight out of it um so this is the same amount or the same sorry uh, well it is the same amount of seed the same variety as the one above and it was started on two eight so it was started four days later and you can see the growth the difference is this one was on the pad on that hemp pad which you can see um, and this one I have in a uh, tray with holes which is the green one and then a tray without holes in the bottom so I'm actually going to put water in the bottom to bottom water it so you know we don't mess up the um, the uh, leaves and all that stuff if you look closely you see all this white stuff kind of looks like uh, uh, mold and that's what I used to think it is and an easy way to tell, uh, this is not mold, an easy way to tell whether or not it's mold, let me get my, oh, another thing you need when you're doing microgreens is one of these uh, little waterers. It comes in handy sometimes, even though you bottom, bottom water some things like uh, uh, sunflower um, seeds and then stuff like this where you just wanna make sure it's not mold, you can just do a quick little spray just to tell. Um, but if you wanna spray, Oh, there's a, so if you spray, sorry, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to spray and see. There we go. So you see how I sprayed and that white stuff is gone. If it was mold, then that white stuff would still be there. But these are called, uh, basically they're called like little leg hairs and that's totally normal. It's just, uh, it's just part of, uh, the, the growing process. So anyways, this is for um, four days behind the other one and so far I'm really really liking this now again I'm using two inch uh, tall trays and I've actually got some new one inch tall trays that's the only downside to this it's, see I've got all that extra tray right there so it's gonna be hard to like really get low um, to cut now one thing I could probably do is when it is ready to cut I can just kind of take this edge and I'm guessing you know, I can just pull it up, pull up the whole pad, and then cut from the pad. So that's another way to get around if you don't want um, to buy new trays, new one inch trays, because they are a lot more expensive than the, you know, the standard two inch. Um, that's something that you could probably do. I'll see how difficult it is to get that hemp pad out without disturbing, you know, too many roots and stuff, so you can still cut it. So 
Here is some fennel um, that was started the same day. I did one and a half ounces. So the fennel is taking a lot longer to um, germinate, which is pretty normal, but um, it did germinate. This looks a heck of a lot better than yesterday. I wish I had taken a picture yesterday. There was like hardly any germination. It was, it was like, a, you know, a couple little things. And I was thinking at first, like maybe it doesn't like to be on hemp seeds, but it just needs more time. Some things are much quicker growing. Fennel is a longer uh, growing thing. But again, it eventually is going to look like that. So this here, shoot, again, I have this turned around, um, the, uh, whatever it is. Oh yeah, this, so this is the ruby red chart again. So you see, this is exactly how the fennel looked yesterday with just a couple of, you know, little seeds germinating and that was it. So I'll check in again tomorrow, but again, that's another slow growing one. Um, and this here is still my lemon basil. They take freaking forever. Um, they're so flavorful and chefs love them, but damn they take forever like a month um, I need to do a trial of that on the hemp the reason I didn't is because the hemp pads apparently don't have a really long shelf life so really really long uh, growers like the basil you know the hemp pad might be um, not the way to go so this is cool this is amaranth and it's actually it's ready today to go ahead and come into the light so you see the color, um, obviously on the outsides, you know, it's already starting to turn a little bit faint pink. Um, and then in the center, it, there's hardly been any um, light exposure. So, sorry, I'm like out of breath, I'm out of shape. Um, so there's hardly been any light exposure because photosynthesis has not occurred yet. So I bet at the end of today, all of this is gonna start looking pink. And by tomorrow or 36 hours from now, for sure, um, it will um, start to look really good. Now this here, I sprayed this earlier. That might be a spot that I'm going to watch. I have had um, little, I don't know, I don't even know, I can't remember um, whether it's bacteria, mold, I think it's like mold, but it'll start as like a little uh, circle and it just kind of spreads its way out. So I'm going to keep an eye on that to see. It looks kind of worse today, right now, than it did earlier today because I, I did spray it to see if those were leg hairs because I just wasn't sure. So I'll check and see what's happening later. Um, also here in the, simp, uh, the hemp, um, I've noticed that th this side here didn't germinate. And I'm guessing it's because uh, the, the edge of this pad didn't get fully so Well, it was all, all soaked, but I'm guessing that the water kind of drained because it's kind of pulled up. I'm guessing the water kind of drained this way and it, it just wasn't enough liquid to, you know, have a full germination. Um, there's a little bit more on the sides. So we'll see. And how I can ultimately tell, um, you know, how well everything germinated and all that is when I cut it to see the weight. I can compare the weight with these hemp pads to what I'm used to. Um, and, uh, you know, that'll be the ultimate test. How, how much am I actually, how much product am I actually getting out of these things? Now this last one, and this is the reason why I have these sitting on the floor, because I need, it's easier for me to show you the whole thing without um, having it under the lights right now. Um, this one here, uh, this is Mizuna. And I grow a lot of Red Kingdom Mizuna. This, chef, this is another chef favorite. So this is one that really didn't germinate well. Um, and again, I think it was actually... Um, a moisture situation not positive but that, I'm pretty sure that's what it is because you know it germinated pretty good out here just not there and so yesterday when I checked on them they all look pretty good for the most part except for this one and it was like dry as heck um, you can even see a little bit here the, the dark browning there I mean it was like really really dry so one thing to note is that normally in, during the germination period if you have a soilless mix uh, you, you usually don't have to water, bottom water, while it's germinating. It'll, it can go like a good, you know, four or five days germinating without um, needing any, any extra water. And then pretty much like the day that you take the, the lid off and put it under lights, uh, that's when you'll want to water it. Um, I'm having a feeling though with these pads, they must just dry out quicker and not hold moisture as well as the soil or soilless mix, whatever. Um, 
So that's something to keep an eye on. Next time, next round, I'm going to bottom water at like day, I don't know, call it like day two or three, probably day two, um, like halfway in the middle. And uh, just to keep some of that moisture going. You don't want too much moisture because that leads to, that can lead to mold, you know, some bacteria. So, but just to keep it like evenly moist. So now I'm in this pickle where this is good. This is like, I don't know, like an inch maybe, or at least three quarters of an inch, probably, no, probably an inch. And then I don't have anything there. So I'm like, what do I do? This, this part is ready to go under the lights. That part ain't germinated at all. So I guess just to save this part that for sure is gonna do well, and that's like two thirds of the tray. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it under lights, see what the hell happens to this. And uh, even if I have to like harvest this and call it five days or so, or seven, eight days from now, um, I can do that. And then maybe that will start to germinate and um, you know, and just let that, that tray kind of be a one third tray. So we'll see. And this is why, you know, I'm doing a lot of trials. So, so the next trial again will be to water halfway through um, to see if I get better germination on all of them. And then, uh, you know, also once they're, once they're fully done um, to just, you know, weigh out um, the harvest amount and compare. All right, so that's it for this update on the microgreen uh, trials for the hemp pads. I will, I guess the next um, update will be when they are fully ready to harvest. And I'll show you what that looks like. And uh, I'll show you actually how to harvest them as well. And uh, we'll see what happens with some of these that didn't have good germination. I'll see if they actually do germinate. Um, after that, um, well, maybe even before that, maybe some of these trays, trays I will actually let go and not harvest them and just like take an L on the tray to see exactly how long I can leave um, the microgreens in the tray um, before like it starts like disintegrating or, or the pad gets kind of bad and yucky. So take care. I hope you like this video. Make sure to, uh, to give me a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you already haven't. Have a great one. Thank you.